to talk to you a little bit about Swellagant Patina products and some tips for warm weather storage of Swellagant. You need to remember that especially the metal coatings are, they're not typical paint. These paints have real metal in them. They're not a metal or a metallic paint. They have real metal in them that's in it with a resin binder. And you know what happens with resin when it gets warm. It sets up, right? So if you store your Swellagant products, especially the metal coatings, in a place where it gets up over 75 degrees and holds, um, or you know maybe maybe even a little bit warmer, you know you might find that it's kind of setting up in the bottle, and that's not something that you want to happen. So to prevent that, you're going to want to keep your Swellagant products in a place where it's not so warm. Now down here in the messy workshop is in a basement and it tends to uh, stay fairly cool down here even in the summer so I'm fine with my stash I don't need to do anything with it but if you live in a place where it's warm all the time um, you're going to remember a couple of things keep your caps tight that's on metal metal coatings dioxides traditional patinas all of that keep the coat the caps tight um, sealed down tight. Um, also shake them up before you use them. Shake them up away from yourself and then open them away from yourself. Okay, so in case if it burps it doesn't squirt on you or your project. Okay, and then um, also, you know, just keep them in a cooler place and uh, I think you're going to be fine. I'm not worried about shipping them to you. I've been shipping them all over the place and plenty of places where it's warm. Um, Christy Friesen, who developed the Swellium product, lives in California, and uh, you know she did mention we need to talk about warm weather. Um, also, too, with the patinas to get them to bloom, if where you're working is really, really warm, you may want to put um, little sponges, damp sponges around your work to create a little bit of a humid environment for it. I don't think it's so much of a problem with metal, but if you're using it on the polymer clay, which is her thing, you're probably going to need that. With the metal, a lot of times I will use a heat gun to speed it up. And then, of course, when the bloom is done with the patina, you throw it in a cup of water and you stop the chemical action. But anyway, what I'm going to show you tonight real briefly is a quick way to get darkening patina on copper. So come over to the workbench with me. I'm going to show you some little curly cues and squiggle stuff that I've been doing with wire wrapping and a couple of ways, one with the swelligant darkening and also with liver sulfur patina gel and how you can get some darkening on your copper to antique it real quick. So come on over. So here's the deal. I've got three types of darkening on copper here. This one is done with a torch. Just like on a soldering block. Just jam your torch down on there until it gets almost red, not quite, then quit. Dunk it to cool it down. And this one I went ahead and whacked it on the bench block to get it flat after it was heated because that helps it be uh, annealed and you can work with the metal better, especially since this was a little bit heavier gauge. It's 18 gauge. This one is darkened with swelligant. This one is darkened with liver of sulfur. Now you can see there's not a whole lot of difference between the swelligant and the patina gel liver of sulfur. This is what we carry on the website, Beadsmith Patina Gel. Um, this again too, uh, you may want to keep it in a cool place, okay, as it tends to get kind of funky if it gets too warm. And then this is the Swellagant Darkening Patina. Now what's the big diff? Well I'm going to show you, they both take really quick with heat. The biggest difference is smell. <laughs> Liver of sulfur does not smell good at all. <laughs> it smells kind of nasty. Swellagant this stuff smells like grandma's pickles and, and not even that strong. So, But I'm going to show you how it goes. Okay, first thing I do, I'm going to do this one with the swell again. You have to heat it. It's not going to happen if you don't heat it. Well, with the swell again, it might overnight, but you got to heat it first. And then you get it really, really, really quick. And I'm for getting it done, okay? So I'm going to heat this up really good on my craft mat. Okay, that's good enough. 
All right, now I'm going to take a, a swab, a little Q-tip, stick it down in my Swelligant Patina Darkening from my pal Christy. And now I'm just going to start, ooh, can you hear that? I'm just touching it. This will give it a really cool antique look. It's really taken because that was really good and hot. The hotter it is, the quicker it'll take. And you may not get it like over the whole piece. Go back and heat it again and do it again if you want. Okay. Yeah. That's good for me. I like to let a little bit of the integrity of the copper show. I like it, you know, I don't like it all black. But all you have to do is just take some steel wool to it later. And you can heat it a little bit more. Then what I would do, I didn't bring my bowl of cool water over here, but what I really should do is I should really pick it up with my copper tongs and throw it in the bowl of cool water now, because that will stop the action. I'll do that later, but just remember, when you're done, throw it in a bowl of cool water, stop the action, let it dry, and you're good to go. Um, you're going to have to seal it. You could do that with my, uh, Krylon spray, matte, um, clear, or you could do it with, rub it down with Renaissance wax. Okay, so... That's it now. Remember I said? Cap it tightly. Okay. Now we're going to do one with stanky patina gel. Get it hot. Okay, that should be good. This stuff will take fast. But when this stuff comes out and it hits that hot copper, ooh, smelly. See? But virtually the same. Now that doesn't appear to be warm enough, so let's go a little bit higher. Okay, let's do it again. Of course, you know we're on camera, so we're going to have that. There it goes. There it goes. Very nicely. Virtually, you know, the same. Pick your poison, huh? Very close, except i got to tell you guys, you're not here to smell it. It reeks. Uh, Swelligan does not reek. So you could do both sides if you want. I'm going to try one of my little tendrils too. And then once again, you know, you'll let that set up. I'm going to put a little more heat on it. Let it set up. And then you'll Ren Wax it or spray lacquer or whatever you like. Get this good and hot. I like the Doris heat tool. It really heats stuff. The only thing better is a torch. It really, really heats stuff up good. Okay, now I'm going to... See how black that's good? Ooh, that's cool. It's kind of rolling all around on me, but you'll have that. Don't pick this up. Guys, I'm telling you what, it's hot. It's just like you just had it on the soldering block. Is it just a little blackening on there? Is that not cool? Does that not look great? So there you go. You got choices. You could do it with this stuff, Beadsmith Patina Gel, and swell again. There is a difference in price. This is ten bucks or thereabouts. This is six. And this doesn't stink. So that's kind of a no-brainer. Which will you choose? Have fun.